Yeah, so Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. So I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Cue the Michael Jackson putting the gun up to himself meme. <laughs> People are going to be very surprised at how easily Leon Edwards is going to walk through Bilal Muhammad. And here's why. One of the most prominent factors, if you haven't fixed it by now, you're never going to fix it. Because three people now have gotten the same Southpaw head kick against Bilal Muhammad. Alan Juban rocked him with it. Jeff Neal rocked him with it. Leon Edwards in the first fight rocked him with it. That's three different people over years, over years, different stages of his career, everything else. And here's another thing. I'm, I'm really excited about this fight, so I'm going to go off on this fight. We're going to do some great analysis on this. Bilal Muhammad right now I think has something going on with Leon Edwards' coach where like he's making fun of Leon's coach's record or I don't know. I'm, I'm unsure if like it's either he had a bad record or like he didn't fight at all type thing. I'm just going to say this. Just because you're a good fighter doesn't mean you're going to be a good coach. Just because you're a bad fighter doesn't mean you're going to be a bad coach. Coaching, it helps if you have that personal experience, but some of the best coaches like Ray Longo, Faraz Sahabi, uh, maybe Trevor Whitman, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but immediately Ray Longo and Faraz Sahabi. Ray Longo didn't fight at all, and Faraz Sahabi never made it out of like the amateurs or regionals and not that much experience. Great coaches, so it just doesn't have that much of a role in this. And what my point with this example is, for somebody who clearly thinks they have the better coach, you would think after falling prey to the same Southpaw head kick from three different fighters across the span of your entire career, you would think your coach would be looking at tape with you and saying, hey, have you noticed that you struggle with the Southpaw head kick when you're orthodox facing a Southpaw? Let's fix that. That has not occurred. And to add further evidence to this, that Joban fight was his debut. So you can't use the excuse, oh, it was his debut, because it still hasn't been fixed since 2016, adding further evidence to the fact this is a deep-seated problem that has been going on for quite some time now, almost a decade, without being fixed. When Jeff Neal called him with it, 2019, three years in between, still not fixed. The first time he fought Leon Edwards and Leon hit him with it, that was 2021. So about two, almost three years will pass since he's last been caught with a Southpaw head kick and against a guy who's caught him with it before. If this has been happening since 2016, I don't think it's going to get fixed because I don't even think that they know it's a problem and they're probably so arrogant they don't think it is. So that's my number one thing right there. He's fighting a Southpaw. And I have an article I'm going to have to write at some point about whether the Orthodox versus Southpaw thing has any merit. And basically it boils down to this. When you got a guy like Bilal Muhammad that is just so weak and susceptible to it, sure, it does play a role in it. And it's going to play a role in this fight. And then the other thing that people aren't taking into consideration is in the first fight, it was in the apex. The apex has a 5% smaller cage than the regular standard size cage that the UFC uses for overseas events and pay-per-views such as this one. So how does that impact the fight? In the first fight, Bilal was closing the distance because he was just aggressively and doggedly chasing Leon Edwards all around. And that was how he was able to close distance because he was taking advantage of Leon having that smaller space that is statistically significant at 5% smaller, the apex gauge. He was taking advantage of that to limit Leon's movement. And he still didn't do a good job back then. And he still got rocked and he still was honestly getting pieced up up until the eye poke. I don't know where the historical revisionism comes that he was winning up until that. He wasn't, and regarding the eye poke, he was also eye poking himself. The road goes both ways. So I'm not really too bent out of shape about Leon eye poking him because he threw the first eye poke and literally extended his jab, I believe it was, and then had it as a fist all the way until it made contact with Leon Edwards and then opened his hands, full hand extension, you know, completely open, took his thumb and tried to like, take it into the corner of Leon's eye. So 
in MMA where you don't even get penalized for eye pokes unless it ends the fight because you win an Academy Award like he did. <laughs> uh, fair is fair until somebody does something about it. And that's ultimately what it rest is. Refs need to do their damn job. Refs need to absolutely do their job. So if they're not doing their job, they have nobody to blame but themselves. So, yeah, that small cage, that was an advantage to Bilal. He's not going to have that now. Leon's going to get exactly what he wants, which is room to work. He's not going to immediately be backing up and, you know, back against the cage where Bilal wants him. He's going to have a lot more room to go in and out, lateral movement, pick him apart, boom, boom, go with it. So Bilal's only route to victory is trying to grapple. I don't think he's going to be able to grapple because Leon thrives in the clinch. The clinch is a part of grappling. Just like he was able to take advantage of some of the same tech, uh, tactics and like setups that Gunnar Nelson was using that I think Bilal Muhammad's going to use, he was able to just expertly evade those and catch Gunnar Nelson coming in every time. And just there was one shot where he hit uh, Gunnar with a counter and like pivoted off to the side so he didn't get stuck up against the cage. And it was like Gunnar Nelson was all four uh, on all fours about to get railed out doggy style type thing. <laughs> And it was just fucking absolutely beautiful. Masterclass by Leon. He's going to do the same thing to Bilal. Bilal is going to try to get the clinch. He's going to pivot off so he doesn't get stuck on the fence, piece him up. He might even decide to engage in the clinch like he did against Usman. I'm trying not to use MMA math. You hear it all the time on this show. But the only time it's bit me in the ass was when I used it against Tyron Woodley and Kamaru Usman in the first fight. I fell for Tyron Woodley when he said, How's he going to wrestle better than me? I'm D1. He's D3. How's he going to strike with me? I got more power, blah, 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 blah. That's the only time it's bit me in the ass. I don't think it's going to bite me in the ass on this one because how's Bilal Muhammad going to strike with him? He's not. Leon's a better striker. Bilal Muhammad in the clinch? I think Leon's better in the clinch. Uh, Kamaru Usman, what I'm getting at with this, if Kamaru Usman couldn't hold Leon Edwards down and couldn't impose his wheel, uh, his will on Leon Edwards, and he's the way better grappler with the way better credentials than Bilal Muhammad. I don't think Bilal is going to be able to do it. Same with Kobe Covington. Kobe Covington actually ended up in very disadvantageous positions when he tried to grapple with Leon Edwards, and Leon was able to reverse and sweep and end up in like top position on some of Kobe Covington's takedowns when he wasn't doing his best bullshit leg kick, <laughs> just spin around the cage and look pre uh, pretty in front of President Trump bullshit that he was playing. When he did try to utilize his only path to victory, it still failed. Bilal Muhammad only has one path to victory. It's still going to fail. The small cage favored Bilal. It's taken away. The southpaw head kick, He's not fixed that. I don't think it's been fixed for all his accolades and heaps of praise he puts on his coach. It's just not going to happen. Those are two huge factors right there conspiring against him. The fact that Leon's takedown defense has gotten better. He's steadily faced grapplers. He's used to grapplers trying to close distance with him. They're going to do it in sloppy ways like Bilal because Bilal, going back to blending your martial arts, is not the guy who's going to seamlessly transition between striking and between takedowns. He's going to be the guy who just tries to run at you, just tries to overwhelm you and back you up. Leon's going to be too privy to that, too savvy for that. He's going to make it look easy. People are just – and this is another thing. I'm curious what the sharp uh, sharp lines and who the money's coming in on because all these people on social media, the Bilal Defense Force is out there saying stupid shit like – this is how you know you're getting desperate with the whole armchair analysis of, oh, he won the elevator exchange or he won the <laughs> face off. Leon looks stupid trying to make him flinch. When you're deep in armchair analysis, like shades of Connor Khabib, that's how you know you've already lost the damn fight. And I want to know if these people are putting their money where their mouth is because it's going to shock people. And I'm here to call it right here, right now, call my shot. People are, have been waiting one and a half years and Bilal's been crying and whining about being overlooked to the point where he's like more angry at uh, Leon than anybody else. And all this just wild, crazy shit he's been saying one and a half years of anticipation just to be like 30 seconds, 30 seconds and done. Not that fast, but you get the point. Like you've been waiting to, you know, get with a little fine little, you know, little something, something, you know, you've been just chasing it, chasing it. You finally get it mid, that's what Bilal Muhammad is. Bilal Muhammad 
is mid. He's going to last 30 seconds in terms of the boom, boom, pal. <clears throat> Not necessarily the actual outcome, but as far as my official prediction, Leon Edwards and head kick KO. So let me pull up what KO's at because that's how confident I feel. I know a lot of people think this is going to be a boring decision. I've been guilty in the past of thinking Leon Edwards is a boring fighter until I started studying him more in depth and the crafty uh, shit that he does. And if that uh, Southpaw uh, high kick just wasn't so obviously there, I would be in on decision. But it's just too good to pass up because KOTKO for Leon right now is plus 300 outright. Uh, that takes the edge off the money line, which is minus 258 for Leon right now. Bilal's at plus 210. I'm not falling for the Bilal. I'm going Leon Edwards. I'm going KOTKO at plus 300. I'm all over it. If it goes to sub, it's damn sure not going to be Leon. If it goes to decision, it just depends. There could be the home cooking since Leon is the English guy. He is the defending champ on home soil. But I would not want to take that risk because he also has the champion's edge. Usually the champion is uh, – favored in close decisions, but I just wouldn't want to take it. I am just so confident with the plus 300 KO TKO head kick. So confident. What do you got? So I also think Leon wins. I'm going to start with that. Right now, for this fight to go the distance, this isn't even like an over-under rounds. Fight to go the distance is minus 210 for yes. So Vegas and everybody really thinks this is going to be a decision, which – I mean, it makes sense. Both of these guys, you saw all the all the fire and emotion that came with Edwards versus Covington uh, and everything that was said in that fight. And then it, you got to the fight and it was anticlimactic. It was like Leon wasn't trying to take his head off and make him pay for what he said. And then Bilal, I mean, there's tree huggers. Bilal's a wall hugger. He's just going to grab you and lean you against the wall and stand there for the entire round. He wants the control time, but he's not going to beat a champion with control time. Uh, he's not going to have the striking edge. I can't see a world where Bilal outstrikes Leon. And if Leon's able to defend the wrestling of Covington and Usman, I just, like, I think he can handle Muhammad. E. Edwards very accurate, and he's got good strike defense as well. So I think Muhammad's going to have a hard time reaching him. I was looking at that decision at plus 100 for Leon because I can see just Bilal just stalling and wasting time. And then Edwards just kind of dancing around the cage, pit, pat, pit, pat, knows he's going to win by decision. Like he's like you said, he's already got the champion's advantage. He's at home. And people value striking more than they value the control time. So I just think Leon would just be totally fine cruising to a decision. But – like you said, Bilal is open to being knocked out, so I think I'll take the double method, which isn't very good. I'm only taking a few cents off Edwards KO and decision at minus 225. That way, if you're right and they do get the knockout, then you know, then we don't lose anything. We just get a little bit of mine and then all of yours versus if he gets the knockout and then you know, I costed us a unit. I'll just go the double method. So I got what I think and what you think, and we just call it a day. You better start listening to the Better in Green podcast. You will not regret it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And hey, I'm Dean Blandino. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Better in Green. All about. Come on, let's make cash now. We always on spot and we cover old spot from the bottom to the top. Hey, shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better win green.